Historic earthquakes indicate the Trans-Mexican volcanic belt's quiet areas are in fact active underneath. This is the volcanic belt is where we're getting all these huge earthquakes. We have the Popocatapet and the Colima volcanoes there as well. This is a region right here. The red region is the Trans-Mexican volcanic belt which reaches from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean. Black dots represent the historic earthquakes used in the study. Each dot has the year and magnitude of the earthquake listed next to it, credit from American Geological uh, Study. Now this is a 60, okay, 6.4 magnitude, 11, uh, sorry, 1611. 7.2 magnitude, 1568. 6.4 magnitude, 1749. 5.5 magnitude, 1771. 4.9 magnitude, just recently 2016. 7 magnitude, 1875. 7.6 magnitude, 1858. 5.3 magnitude, 1979, 7 magnitude, 1912, 4.9 magnitude, 1950, 5.1 in 1976, 5 magnitude, 1976, again 5 magnitude, 1976, all these the same year, 6 magnitude, 1887, again 1575, 5.7 magnitude, 1926.4 magnitude. So these earthquakes are actually indication that something is happening underneath. They're volcanic earthquakes. This is by the, Geolo the American Geophysical Union, Abigail Eisenstadt, September 26, 2019. It's just in. These historic earthquakes suggest the Trans-Mexican volcanic belts, quiet regions, are active. Si seemingly low hazard seismic regions in Mexico experience multiple very strong earthquakes since the 1500s. New research finds suggesting the regions have many unmapped active fault lines. That's always the case when you have subduction zones, they can even be new ones. Now the areas are inside the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt and that's the area which is home to roughly 40% of Mexico's population who may be unaware of the land's seismic history, of course. Now new research collected archival records documenting the belt's historic earthquakes, converting the historic reports into numerical data. The new study in American Geophysical Union Journal, tectonics found there have been at least 16 large earthquakes during the past 450 years in areas of the belt previously believed to be dormant. So obviously they're not dormant if you have these huge earthquakes. And they say challenging an existing understanding of the belt's behavior. Quote, instrumental seismology spans a little over 100 years but this phenomenon takes place at geological times. If we want to understand what's really happening in the Earth, then we really need to go back and see what's happening, unquote, said Gerardo Suarez, seismologist, National Autonomous University of Mexico in Mexico City, Mexico. He's the lead author of this new study. The Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt is a 1,000 kilometer or 621 mile long volcanically tectonic active region stretching from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean almost horizontal across central and south Mexico it's home to many urban centers including Mexico City okay so we said 40 percent of the population of Mexico lives there 40 percent of Mexico's population seismic hazard is the probability that an earthquake could occur in a region over a specific time frame. Scientists assume that the seismic hazard of the Trans-Mexican volcanic belt 
was low because there were not many documented earthquakes. Even if a region hasn't had earthquakes for a century, it still could be seismically active. Suarez suspected the belt's areas without visible faults, like its central and western region, could have had earthquakes in the past because missionaries, colonial government officials, and Aztec codices recorded descriptions of tremors, landslides, and fractures in the region. And before the widespread use of earthquake recording equipment, earthquakes in the past are identifiable only through written accounts. Understanding the history of earthquakes inside the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt could help alert people living in the region to the potential seismic hazard there, according to the study's authors, and using history to find hidden fault lines. The researchers collected historical records from Mexican archives, using them to classify individual earthquakes from 1568 to 1920. They selected 16 earthquakes with enough recorded sites and reported damage to qualify for the study. An Aztec codex called Anales de Tlatelolco, for example, recorded seismic activity for more than four days in 1575. One of the villages where the earthquake was felt, named Zacayototlan, is nowhere to be found in modern Mexico. Another manuscript script hints at Zacototlan was a pre-Hispanic settlement found near Volcano in the Belt Central region. The town's ruins have never been found. In another example, a magnitude 7.6 earthquake struck the state of Michoacan in 1858. Its epicenter was a city called Morelia in the center of the volcanic belt. Documents from time attest to its devastating aftermath in the, in the state. The same earthquake also struck Mexico City, roughly 200 kilometers away, that's 124 miles away. The city hall and other government buildings were damaged, as well as aqueducts. Suarez and his colleagues converted the archival testimonies into numerical values using the modified Mercalli intensity scale, a seismological method that ranks earthquakes by the intensity of the damage or by how it was felt by the population. Earthquakes that are severe might move furniture, while violent earthquakes cause building collapse. The scale helped the scientists use the report of damage to assess and assign each earthquake an intensity data point and then estimate the magnitude and epicenter using a numerical approach. Results showed earthquakes have happened throughout the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, even in areas thought to be geologically inactive. These earthquakes were particularly common in the central and western reaches of the volcanic belt. Several of them are associated with blind faults, or faults that are not visible on the Earth's surface, according to the study. Suarez said we should expect earthquakes throughout the volcanic belt, even in areas where we have not yet been able to map active tectonic faults. This is on FIS.org, and it's by American Geophysical Union. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.